Well, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are tuning from. I am so excited that you guys joined us for another episode of the Entrepreneur Podcast, where we do business and life God's way. Today we have, a, oh my gosh, a, a, an amazing topic to discuss, which is all about wellness. And I am so privileged and honored to have P. Ilani Schneider from Hawaii, which I'm originally from. This just makes my heart so happy um, that, um, that she's able to join us. She specializes in that wellness transformation. And um, P. Ilani, or P.E. for short, um, she uh, is going to talk to us a little bit about what she does, what her business is all about, how she helps people like you, and then shares um, wisdom nuggets for us entrepreneurs. And, um, and I know you guys are going to be truly blessed by what she's about to inspire us to do and, and just give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding when it comes to all the different things that we see out there. Um, as you know, wellness is such a huge um, topic, especially now with the coronavirus and everything, and and um, and just just not even prior to that. You know, people there's all these different fads, and I love that she's here to kind of shine some light on you know what is the truth about all of that. So um, before I bring her on, I wanted to kind of let you guys know how I met her. I actually am part of a Facebook group um, by Sean Quintero um, about, um, uh, it's called Christian Entrepreneurs um, Business with a Purpose. And um, when I was looking for guests, the Lord told me, um, put it, you know, to uh, basically reach out to that group. And she was one of the individuals that, um, that really spoke to me um, when I received her information. And I know she's going to be such a blessing today. So, um, P. Ilani, I just wanted to um, give you a few minutes to kind of introduce yourself, talk to us about your family and what you do, what your business is all about, and then we'll go from there. Well, thank you, Edna. It's a blessing to be here with you. And I have a grin from ear to ear because it's always just such a a gift to be able to share space with a fellow um, believer mm -hmm. and you know when we can live our lives the way God intended that God purposed us for we truly are doing everything we can do while we're on this earth in this flesh so it's my pleasure to be here with you I appreciate it and um, for me I'm a, I'm a I have been on a mission, I was on a mission to finding uh, a better life for myself and my kids. I have two children. They're older. They're 26 and 30 now. Mm -hmm. um, but throughout raising them, I knew there was um, a problem because I found myself in my job uh, hating Mondays, mm -hmm. hating my alarm, uh, not appreciating my boss. Uh, two weeks vacation just didn't seem enough for all the work that I put into it. Um, there was just so many things that were going on in my life that I knew there was a better way. Yeah. I knew that this is not where God wanted me to be planted. I knew that he wanted me to be happy. I knew that he wanted abundance. I knew that he wanted me to find, be healthier. And that was my prayer for about five years. I had prayed uh, servant leader at church, you know, very faithful at church, wow. praying for better health, praying for better finances. And about five years later, God presented me with this amazing opportunity. So I, um, at first didn't recognize it. And about a week into, uh, trying this very organic, natural, God's way of food, um, I realized, oh, this is what I've been praying for. You know, he answers prayers and um, we just need to be patient and faithful. It's not necessarily going to come on our time. Um, and so if we consistently, faithfully pray, God will answer them in his time. And it's interesting because that's exactly what happened. My, uh, I was in crisis for uh, uh, I call it an unha unhappy 
crisis. I was searching for happiness. Um, mm -hmm. Although I knew Jesus loved me, I loved him. It was just the flesh was really hard. And um, every complaint of everything I had and more was answered in that split second of finding um, this truth in a quality food source. Mm -hmm. um, for up until that point, uh, I didn't know how to shop. I didn't know how to read labels. Right. I didn't know what was going on in the, the quality of the, uh, the food from the soil, from the seed to the soil, from the farming to the manufacturing, the food, uh, it's all corrupt. And I learned more. The more I learned, the more I realized God planted me here to educate. Um, he planted me here to help cleanse his holy temples. Um, and, and so it's just been, it's been a true blessing six and a half years now. And uh, again, smiling ear to ear, being able to share with this with other people, this good news. Wow. Wow. And that's, and that's key. You know, people perish because of lack of knowledge, right? And right, so right. a lot of times we don't even know what we're doing to our bodies. And we know what the scripture says about our bodies, that it is a holy temple. You know, this is where it's we have to be good stewards of what God has gifted us with, which is Correct. our body. Um, so, you know, I always ask people, you know, in, in, in the show, like, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to know the Lord? Mm, yes, I'd love to. Well, I, um, I, I am a, a descendant of um, missionary families that came to Hawaii back in the 1800s. Wow. Um, and, uh, but, you know, as, as generations, there, 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 there's breakage and things like that. So I didn't grow up in church, although I did grow up seeing my grandmother go to church is my mother didn't go to church right so I kind of grew up seeing both sides and but being but else and also being pulled towards um, my grandmother's spirit and so it wasn't until um, my son actually um, had a child uh, he was he was very ill at the age of five Mm. And um, I went um, and got on my knees and I said, please don't take them. They gave him 24 hours to live. And I said, please wow. don't take them. And I bartered, I bartered at that moment. Um, and uh, he didn't, he's, he's 30 today. So it was a barter. So I found Jesus through barter. <laughs> <laughs> and get your um, somehow, right? That's awesome. So you get, he gets you somehow. I bartered yeah. it. Um, it's just, don't take him. You can have me, you know, I, I give you me, keep, wow. let me have him. So it was that, it was very powerful. And his doctor said that that was nothing more than a miracle. They really thought he was going to go in 24 hours. Wow. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a miracle. God, God came through on that one real fast. <laughs> wow. That one I didn't have to wait for. <laughs> wow. How did, how did that change or, you know, obviously that, that's a big deal, you know, um, that's a big mm -hmm. change, a complete 180 for what the doctors tell you. How did that increase your faith in God after that happened? I mean, to talk to us about that experience, how did your perception of the Lord um, change from that moment? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that was truth. That was... Um true um understanding uh you know because like i said I, I i came my i saw my grandmother's spirit mm -hmm. and then i saw my mother um you know focused on the world i saw my yeah. grandmother focused on god and so it wasn't that hard of me to shift because i already saw both sides mm -hmm. i was living in the in the worldly side but then i saw my grandmother's side so it wasn't hard to shift because once god created did that saved him um Actually, it was about three months of learning now mm -hmm. uh, what that meant. So it took about three to four months of learning what that meant. At that time, I did. Um, I had a mentor. My my grandmother's sister uh, mm -hmm. was a pastor. Mm -hmm. And so she mentored me during that time when I told her what I had done. Yeah. Um, because for about three months, I hadn't uh, given myself yet. I hadn't gone, I hadn't started going to church. I hadn't started reading the Bible. I was still involved in um, being by myself. 
son's bedside. And so she was the one that says, oh, you, okay, this is what you need to do. So she sort of guided me. She was my mentor um, mm -hmm. through, through that process. And it just allowed, it allowed me to start reading and understanding his power in our lives and the truth that he has for us and um, the, the difference between spiritual battle and flesh, battle of the flesh. I mean, everything. I went through a lot of lessons with my auntie right. and, and biblically and in the past 25 years, I've been on a lot of um, small groups, you know, iron sharpens iron, learning more from each other kind of thing. So it's been a beautiful journey. Wow. That's amazing. And I like to talk about that. Sometimes, you know, um, people think it's an overnight thing sometimes, um, and, but it is a journey. It is a process. And every day, you know, mm -hmm. there's more things that you can learn about the Lord and your, your relationship with God can go deeper and deeper as you continuously seek him. And he will reveal more of himself and then his mysteries to you um, if, if you continue to prioritize him in your life. Now, tell us a little bit about your why, P. Can you tell us why do you do what you do? Wow. Well, that's, that's huge. Um, there's many facets of my why I, from more, it started with, like I said, personal reasons. I knew that I needed to, he had something bigger for me yeah. and, um, and I, you know, they're like that. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I don't, might not have the exact name and the author right now, but that was one of the first books that I had picked up in that 25 year of getting deeper and deeper into um, our relationship with Jesus. What's the and name of the book, PE? Because you kind of broke it up. It was something something about conversation with God. Okay, conversation with God. Okay. Something like that. And I read the first page and it just, uh, it grabbed me mm. um, because I had, I don't know if you've had or your listeners have had these literal conversations like you can carry on a full yeah. conversation yeah. and when I read that book I'm like oh my gosh yes I thought at first I was like it was my imagination you right. know but no I was having conversations yeah so through um uh before I found what I'm doing now I you know you're it's it's coming across the news the um uh chemicals, herbicides, pesticides, oh my gosh, and they're telling you how bad this food is, how bad that is, you know, all this kind of stuff, but it doesn't, it didn't actually give us a solution, it just said bad, 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 you know, I read stuff like that with no solution, so I almost was at that point where stop, you know, let us live in peace unless we have a solution, because this can drive someone crazy, so I started praying for that solution. I started praying for, because I could tell my own personal health was deteriorating right. every year I got older, every right. year got fatter, gained weight, le le less, no sleep. At one point I had um, broken my leg. So I was living with arthritis for about five years. My doctors told me I was going to live with it the rest of my life deal with it. I don't take pain pills. So I, I lived with a lot of pain um, for a solid five years, prayed that if God could help me find some kind of relief. And um, so the why was personal. And then when I found this, what I'm doing now, I realized now the why became, I have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Other people don't need to live in silence. They don't need to silently suffer and continue the journey of eating the foods that the government says is okay to eat. FDA says it's okay, where it, it's not okay. Those foods are not God-given foods. All the processed foods, all the ingredients and in the box foods and the canned foods and everything, even the herbicides and pesticides that's put on um, produce today, all of that is not God given. All of those were created by greedy corporations, money making corporations, profit over people. And so then it became very apparent why God planted me here mm -hmm. is I needed to save his children. His all our our temples are holy. Mm -hmm. Our temples, and um, if I can quote. Let me put it up if I can quote scripture. Oh, shucks, where did it go? 
um, sorry, here, 1 Corinthians, if I can quote it from 1 Corinthians, yeah. and oh, I thought I had it all for you. Um, I'm sorry, I thought I had it all laid out here so I could just, I could quickly no pull it up. No worries, no worries. Um, okay, I can't, can't pull it up right now because I'm feeling like I'm having you wait too long, but it's oh, no worries. Go ahead. in 1 Corinthians 6 and it Is that speaks your body on the how temple? our, Is that what it was? how our, our bodies are his holy temple. What we put in it is a reflection of how we're honoring him. Right. And, and so when we're eating without thinking, right, when we're eating because the government tells us it's okay to eat these foods. Hey, PE, hey, PE do you want me to read it for you? I have it. Uh, yes, first, you have it? Yes, please. Yes. First Corinthians six nineteen. It says, do yes. you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Yes. Thank you, Edna. You're welcome. Exactly. <laughs> and, and when I saw what the purpose of this was is to when we um, trust all the foods on the market and when we're um, almost uh, ignoring the fact that a lot of the foods in the grocery stores on the main strips, if you will, are, are profit over people. Yeah. When you really dig deep at what's there, then you start really looking at getting mad and angry that you're doing this to his holy temple. Not So it's almost like I removed myself from me getting angry at myself at seeing right. what was being done to others so there there lies my why that's truly the the root of my why of mm. I have been given this awareness and um and it's it's a simple shift for people when they make the decision uh to really believe this 1 Corinthians six nineteen, really understand and live this 1 Corinthians six nineteen, and then there's the uh, another that is one Genesis, uh, Genesis one twenty nine, and God mm -hmm. said, "Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat." Yeah. And and none of this says anything about processed and herb, uh, you know, fillers and additives yeah. and binders and everything else that's coming in the food that we're eating today. This is truth. This is whole food nutrition. And so, yeah, that's my why. Wow. What better guidelines or, or principles to live by, you know, but whatever God intended. He's created the world, right? So why not go to the creator and ask him how he intended for us to live? And so thank you for sharing those scriptures. Um, you know, when you were talking, you know, I was reminded of that scripture. Uh, I think it's an it was Ezekiel, I'm not sure, but it was about, um, um, God told him, God told, I think it was Ezekiel, God told Ezekiel, if you do not say what I have shared with you, their blood will be on your hands. And you oh. mentioned to me that, you know, you said that you feel like it's a responsibility because now that you know the truth, you have to share the truth with those around you. And I think that that right there, you know, it's more than just, you know, a business for you. It sounds like this is, this is literally, you're, you're stewarding what God has revealed to you well by sharing these, this um, particular, um, this knowledge and the solution with other people. And so I just wanted to share that because the Lord reminded me that when you were talking here. Um, now, can you... Um, share one well i appreciate that i appreciate that edna uh -huh. i appreciate that before you ask me the next question sure. um i want to elaborate on that because Go ahead. uh what what's happening is because it's a responsibility that i've taken upon myself it's also because of my personal awareness of how deep my relationship came became with right. Jesus, how much the, the, what I was talking about before the conversations with God, how crystal clear those conversations mm -hmm. have become because my temple is cleansed. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So it's a, it's a deeper relationship spiritually because the Holy temple is so clean. So good. And so, you know, when, when, yeah, I talked about arthritis before that's gone, that, that left my body in, in a week. Um, the weight left my body in 30 days, uh, 10 wow. days to 30 days. The, the, the brain fog, I used to have Virgo at least three times a year. I have not had Virgo for six and a half. Wow. All of the health aspects have left my body. And then what has come in is a true relationship where I can hear that dialogue. I can pray, step, pray. I can pray. He tells me what to do. I can step. And where before it was a little bit foggy, you know, it was a little bit like, uh, is this coming from him or is this what's going on? Now it's clearly the voice is very clear. Wow. And so even more, it's become this why of showing other fellow Christians the power of cleansing the holy temple, the power of really, I mean, you know, he can use our bodies whether they're clean or not. Mm -hmm. And as we are walking in our journey closer to him this is all the things that we're up against the world the flesh and everything right so as we have a clean temple it, it's another step of helping us truly understand what he has in, in store for us right it's just really having that dialogue so crystal clear right that is so good you know i never heard you know that explained that way before you know that it also helps um Get, give you clarity so you could hear the voice of the Lord um, even more and have a deeper intimacy with him because there's nothing kind of distracting you, nothing holding you back. I mean, um, for those who have been, you know, I had bad back problems before and it's hard to concentrate on what the Lord is saying when your body is in pain, you know? <laughs> and so- Yes, back, exactly. Right? Exactly. So the fact that you're well, you're healed, you're whole, you have no physical issues, you know, you feel great, you're not bloated, you know, you have so much energy, natural energy, you're not like crashing because of caffeine and all the other stuff. Like there's just, it does make a difference, not just in your spiritual life, but obviously in your daily life, your daily activities, because when you feel well, your body is well, I feel like you could execute a lot well as well. So um, I love that. Um, now, I thank you, thank you for, for sharing that because I, like I said, I've never heard it that way explained before, but um, I, I, that's really good. Um, B.E., can you tell us uh, a challenge that you face as an entrepreneur and how did you overcome it? Oh, that's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. I feel that the most honest answer I have for you right now that I don't know if I could help many of your leaders with this is because once I became an entrepreneur, I, I had the job before, I had a job before, right? So I was yeah. working a nine to five job. Once I started this path back in 2013, actually January of 2014 is when I made the decision and April 2014 is when I actually left my job. Mm -hmm. um, there, I don't consider anything to be a challenge. I consider it all to be a journey. And yes. because my relationship and I have faith in his will, I have faith and he's always a step ahead of me. Um, that I don't know, I don't know if I would call it a challenge, but let me try to help people understand the, um, we live in a fallen world. So yeah. there's things that is going to happen. Yeah. And, um, and with those things that happen, if we're not trusting that he's always a step ahead, I suppose you're right. It will be a challenge. And, and so there, there lies the importance of having that crystal, crystal clear relationship with him. Because through the course of my business, um, every business has, a, is a roller coaster, right? Yes. Yes. Um, every business has issues, has things that come up in them. And, and it's going to happen. Things are going to happen. It's, it's, it's business. You're dealing with other people. You're dealing with non-believers. You're dealing with the government, licensing, whatever happens, taxes, things like that. There's always going to be, um, as you, as I feel I'm getting closer to what my truth is, 
I've, I, I'm like, I've been this onion. I've been peeling layers and layers and layers away from this onion to get the true core of who God planned for me to be. It's been a journey mm -hmm. because prior to this, I was living, as I said, I had my grandmother and I had my mother. So I had both sides that I was growing up, not knowing who I was, the identity, right? I didn't have that identity. So the identity I have in Christ is if I really, truly, uh, even though back 25 years ago with my son, I was still not knowing what my true identity was because of the ill health, right? Like you were saying, all you can do is think about your pain, right? Mm -hmm. So because of my ill health, which was every year it kept something started, you know, something happened. I trust me. I, I mean, I'm a melanoma survivor. I uh, had pre, um, pre cancer, uh, cervix cervical cancer I had pre-thyroid I mean my health was not good things um, then yeah you kind of like are struggling through life because it's hard to say God do you really have this plan for me it's hard to do that right where once I started cleaning my temple five five and uh, six and a half years ago is when I started really believing that all is good and good in his timing. I was no longer suffering, suffering physically. Physically, when I was 56, now I'm 62. I'm healthier. I feel healthier than I when I was 30. So physically, I'm completely- amazing, by the way. Abyss. I checked out your pictures. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So so anyway, in, in when we're looking at the challenges um, in as an entrepreneur, and we're clean and our physical body is cleansed and we have this really, really great, uh, we're not worried about, you know, physically the pain and suffering of flesh, then the challenges become, okay, we can deal with that. Okay, you know, so the stress factor of having to deal with all these things that are going to come because that's the, that's the beautiful part of being an entrepreneur. It's not all peaches and cream, right? There's right. things that are going to happen. When your temple, when your body, when your mind, spirit, and soul, when you can handle that stress factor, it's not necessarily a, a in quotations, challenge. It's a, okay, I got to deal with that. Okay, that's the next step. Okay, I've got to do that. So it becomes less stressful yeah. and um, more of task driven. Got to take care of that. Got to do that versus the word challenge. Yes, yes. I, and I love that analogy. And it's, and, 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 and you know, this comes, and I, the reason why I share this is because in the world, you know, entrepreneurship and, and then and for God's way of doing business, as you can see, there's two different perspectives here. PE just showed that a challenge isn't really a challenge for her because he knows that God has her and whatever it is that she has to do, which God has already given a solution for. He didn't say that, but that's what I'm getting, you know, that it's not a challenge. It's just another thing that she has to do as part of her journey in entrepreneurship. Whereas you have those um, who may be operating in the world systems who looks at challenges as it is a challenge that you know, it's like a do or die kind of thing. And, um, and, and, and I love that, you know, that that's the type of uh, mentality you have PE is that you're not afraid of any giant that you may face, you know, and it's, and it's, um, and it's a different perspective. I think that um, those who are listening, um, that I want to emphasize it to those who are listening, because, you know, it's, it's huge. When, you, when you're not afraid of battles, you're not afraid of challenges, you're not afraid of things that may not go according to plan because you know ultimately that the Father is with you and he's guiding you and he's helping you along the way and nothing is too hard for him. And so I, I thank you for, um, for sharing that. Um, now, there are, and like I said, there are people who, and, and, and I'm sure you, you know this, that there are entrepreneurs who do struggle sometimes, whether it's, um, you know, health wise, it could be financially, it could be uh, mindset wise or whatever. What would, what would be that one piece of encouragement you would say to people who are struggling right now in their business or in entrepreneurship in this journey, you know, the, the, the twists and turns of entrepreneurship, what would you, how would you encourage them today? So, so I, 
so here's the thing I, without being um self-promoting i have to at this moment because of the responsibility i have yes um as an entrepreneur as i've seen helping other entrepreneurs there is a level of uh higher productivity um brain fog is lifted so you can focus better yeah um you are uh, clear-headed in making your decisions. And so all of this is uh, what really makes a powerful entrepreneur, someone that is that can, gets up early in the morning and out of bed and doesn't need coffee and um, doesn't have to rely on uh, outside um, uh, stimulants to wake up their brain, you know, those kind of things. Things, it's all so natural that, I help actual entrepreneurs. I help business women specifically and men. Primarily business women has been um, my, my uh, specialty. Although I do have a few men that I'm helping. Yeah. Um, and, and specifically also what I found is a lot of moms, uh, moms working from home, um, that kind of thing. So it's almost like there's, if I could, if the tip I could give anyone that truly would serve you is to reach out to me. That's it. I, I don't see anything else. There's books. Yes, there's books. There's podcasts. There's all kinds of Tony Robbins is amazing. You know, um, there's, there's just tons of people out there that can help with mindset. Um, and also when the body is still not cleansed, there's still going to be struggle. There's still going to be struggle. There's just, it's, I don't know anyone that can live through, uh, 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 you know, some kind of disease like uh, uh, gut issues and things like that right. and have to go to a lunch or a dinner with their clients and they have to worry about what they eat because, oh, I, I don't know if I've got to rent to the bathroom or uh, I don't know how I'm going to feel. Those are issues that, that we have to deal with if we're not, if we don't have a, a really cleansed temple. So all those little things that happen in the flesh really project in people's businesses. Yes. Yes. Um, and, and, and also in um, when there's ill in the body, there's also ill in the mind. So decisions are bad. Uh, maybe somebody might, um, uh, even though they're Christian, they might get short tempered and yell at their employees. You know, that's not because of their character. That's because there's illness, there's disease in his, their, in their bodies. So I have to do a self, uh, self promotion right now. And for that specific thing is, um, calling me. And the cool thing is I'm not expensive, you know, and that's because this is a mission for, it's almost become a ministry for me. Right. So, um, that would be my number one tip. Self, yeah. self, uh, promotion right there. But that's the only thing I can think of that would change and help, um, an entrepreneur with what I've seen. I love that P and, 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 I don't really think it's self-promotion. You have the answer, right? <laughs> You're the answer. That makes sense. So I don't think it's, 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 it's kind of like Jesus, right? It's like, he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to say, I am the way I am the truth. I am the life, you know? And, um, and, um, I'm, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you a hundred percent. Um, if, if you're not well, um, in your body, it will affect everything else. And so you definitely want to address that first and foremost, um, because all the other stuff, um, obviously will follow. Um, because even if let's say you try to read books to improve your mind and you're not, you have a headache, you're not going to be able to comprehend what you're studying. And I, and I know what it's like, I, I live in both sides where I am taking care of my body and then the ones where I'm not. And there is a huge difference. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad, and I'm sure you'll be sharing a little bit more about how to, um, a little bit later, how we can um, connect with you in regards to your services. Um, so right now, can you tell us a little bit about your personal mantra? What do you live by? Hello, PE? I think you're on mute. Mm, my, with, by love. I live by love. Everything is love. Everything that's going on right now is 
Oh, can you hear me? Now I can. can yeah, you, 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 were, you were muted earlier, but go ahead. Okay. Um, so my mantra is love. Above all else, love. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, it's been um, a beautiful process because there is, you know, I have been growing into the person that I am today. Like I said before, there's a lot of things that happened in my life that I put up walls. I, I lost trust. Um, I always had faith, but I lost trust in people. I put up walls with people around me, um, you know, all those kind of things. And so in this journey that I'm on now, it's really about love and honoring a person where they're at, honoring um, a situation. Someone might be so in hurt, but so worried about change that I still will love them. I'll honor them and I'll meet people where they're at. So I pretty much am that I'll meet people where they're at. And also I won't leave them there. Mm. You know, I know I see the light. I see the light. I see where people can be. I see the, the, the glory that is in store for people um, when they follow this path. I, I, I know Jesus planted me here. I'm blooming me here. Uh, and um, so I would say my mantra is love. Love, 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 love. I, I, love is such a, and, it, and I know just from hearing you talk, I mean, you could just ex feel the love of God flowing through you. And, um, and, um, and obviously um, you can't give what you don't receive. So obviously you, the tangible love of God is probably ever present in your life each and every day. Um, so, um, if people are interested in connecting with you, how, what would be the best way to reach out to you, especially for those, um, women entrepreneurs, like you said, moms, um, or even men, how can we, um, connect with you? So best way to connect would be, I feel through my email. Um, I do have Instagram. I do have Facebook. Uh, and, but direct would be email P E Schneider at me.com. I have Instagram P -E underscore then Schneider, um, is Instagram. And then I have Facebook P E Schneider. Um, so, but m directly would be more than likely email because they're getting it through you. Yes. Where if they go to social media, I won't know if they are who they are. So, so I think I would feel better if they emailed me. Yes, and I'll put her email address, guys, in the description um, below um, so you guys can have access to that. All right, well, Bea, um, can you take a few minutes to pray for our listeners right now? And, um, um, and then we will end our episode today. Yes, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to pray for everyone. Lord God, thank you for this opportunity of speaking with Edna and her followers. Um, thank you for this, the technology that we can do this and reach out to other people, you know, and to them are present. So are you, Lord God, so I appreciate this opportunity to share this information with other Christian entrepreneurs, Lord God, that you've planted all Christian entrepreneurs there to do your works, Lord God, and whatever on to whatever business they have we know it's to glorify you and so at this moment I'd like to pray for the people listening lord god pray for their holy temples to be cleansed pray that that you speak to them if if i'm to help them that you let them know that uh, you know i ask that you bring me the people i'm supposed to help lord god you know that in six and a half years that's what i've been doing so that doesn't change here with people that i don't know on this so i appreciate that love that you are present with us and you are guiding us all to work together to help glorify you lord to glorify your holy temple to cleanse your holy temples to bring your children closer to you it's a spiritual journey lord god this is our flesh and it's not always easy in this flesh lord god and it's easy with you all things are possible through you. We glorify you. We glorify your son's name, Jesus Christ. And we love you. We know you love us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, P.E., thank you so much, again, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak with us and share some insight. And um, we'll definitely be sending people your way. Um, I will... Um, um, 
provide again her website as well as her contact information in the description so you could reach out to her directly um, and um, for those of you guys who are watching thank you again for joining in for another episode I know you guys are um, leaving this episode inspired and hopefully ignited to want a better life for yourself as far as your health and your wellness and just know that it will make a difference in your business and in your life um, and it's our obligation again as sons and daughters of God to take care of our bodies this is P said earlier so until next time guys join us next time for another episode of the Estepreneur podcast and um, in the meantime keep shining talk to you guys soon bye bye aloha aloha